we start and conclude our very short book of the Bible, Joel. It has three chapters, chapters 1 to 3. There's not much on personal salvation in Joel, which is the point of our read studying the Bible. Um, so I will give some background on when it was written to see how it chronologically fits into other events of the Bible and other prophets' writings. It deals on a national level with Judah and its call to repent of its sins, as Daniel's prayers it um, in chapters in Daniel chapter nine. Its relevance to our study is we can compare Judah's national call to repent to our personal call to repent and receive similar blessings on a personal level as they did on a national. The same theme throughout the Bible. on which Yeshua says, um, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Bear in mind, whenever the day of Jehovah, or Yahweh, um, however you want to pronounce it, is, is coming, our day is when we die, which could be tomorrow or any day soon. So do not focus on the day of the Lord, but your day of death. Some people keep thinking the day of the Lord is in the future and forget that day, day may come at any point now. Would God see you as a sheep on your day or goat? Prepared or not, deceived as those in Matthew 7.21 who said, Lord, Lord, let me in. Um, or one that had both commandments of God and the faith of Yeshua as it said is required in Revelations 14.12 and 22.11. Sorry, not 40, not 2011. 2011 says that when you die, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So it makes no difference when the day of the Lord comes. When you die, that's how you will be judged. Revelation 22:12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. One of the major deceptions of the devil and his ignorant preachers, or maybe they, they know what they're, they're preaching falsely, is that our works do not come into it because they misunderstand Paul. Throughout the Bible, and even towards the end, it says you're judged according to your works, and those who do, which means an action, your work, will, um, his commandments, have a right into the tree of life. Okay, the name Joel means Jehovah is God. Joel prophesied against the southern kingdom of Judah to return to God before even greater discipline and judgment befell them. The contents of the book indicate that it was written fairly early in the reign of Joash, 835 to 796 BC. Three factors that substantiate this, this date are one, the enemies named are, sorry, the enemies named are the Phoenicians, the Philistines, Egyptians, and Edomites. Joel chapters 3 verses 4 and 19. These are early enemies of Judah. Later opponents would have included Assyria and Babylon. Two, the position of the book in the collection of the works of the prophets indicates that the Jews considered it the oldest book addressed to Judah. And three, there is no mention of a reigning king and an emphasis on elders as priests is given. It's Joel chapters 1 verse 1, 9, 13, 14, and chapter 2 verse 16, which would be appropriate for Joash, since he was crowned while still a very young boy and was under the guardianship of the high priest Jehoiada. See 2 Kings chapters 11 verses 1 to 21 and chapters, and 2 Chronicles chapters 22, 10 to 23, 15. The prophecies of this book can be divided into four sections. One, a prophetic type of the day of the Lord, Joel chapters 1, verses 1 to 20. Two, the direct prophecy of the day of Yahweh himself, or itself, um, 
Joel chapter 2 verse 1 to 32. Some people think the day of the Lord is a good thing. Um, no, the day of the Lord is actually a bad thing. The wrath. Judgment. 3. The prophecy of the judgment of, of nations. This is mentioned in Joel chapter 3 verses 1 to 17. And fourthly, a prophecy of the full kingdom blessings of Israel. Joel chapter 3 verses 18 to 21, which is always God concludes in most of his prophecies about um, the final position of the 12 tribes of Israel. An important theme addressed within the book of Joel is that Jehovah is the God of life. God was in control over the people's economic situation, Joel chapters 1 verse 4 to 12, and their armies, Joel chapters 2 verse 1 to 11. He alone could grant mercy to them, Joel chapters 2 verses 12 to 17. Okay, a few verses of Joel chapters 1. The word of Yahweh came to Joel, the son of Pethiel. Of, of Pethiel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all you inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell you your children of it, and let your children tell their children, their children another generation. Verse 6. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean and bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. So God is saying how his land will become, will be desolation, all such things, because the enemy has come on Judah. Verse 9. The meat offerings and the drink offerings is cut off from the house of all of Yahweh. The priests, Yahweh's ministers, mourn. Verse 14. Sanctify you a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all inhabitants of the land into the house of Yahweh, your God, and cry unto Yahweh. Chapter 2, verse 1. Blow you the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, that all the inhabitants of the land are tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is near at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and the strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Verse 12. Therefore also now, saith Yahweh, turn you even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto Yahweh your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto Yahweh your God? My comment. Some people use chapter 2 verse 13, rend your heart and not your garments, as indication not to keep God's commandments. They interpret it as God wanting us to offer our hearts and not our actions. That is wrong. The word is rend, not render. Rend is to tear. Render is to offer or give. In verse 12, it says also, it says also, meaning something in addition. It should be clear God wanted them to stop sinning, repent and return to keeping his commandments. Then also to rend which means tear or destroy the attitude in their hearts rather than the garments and replace it with a return to God, a heart that loves God. We know from previous studies of John's writings to love God is to keep his commandments. And I say previous, for so those in um, the New Testament which we haven't got there yet, I have mentioned John in past studies. Joel chapters 2 verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cankerworm, and the caterpillar, and the palm, palm, palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, 
and praise the name of Yahweh your God and have dealt sorry and and praise the name of Yahweh your God that have dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am Yahweh your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed my, my comment as God said in Deuteronomy 29 obedience brings or restores blessings and note God says and I will he first tells them to keep his commandments and render their, heart, their hearts and not their garments and then he says and I will meaning it's a condition of getting um, his blessings some people like to claim all the things that the canker worm has taken away they've got to bring it back to them without seeing it is always conditional lastly of verse chapter 2 verse 27 and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am Yahweh your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions Notice God is talking to the tribes of Israel. He starts this verse and says, saying, after he says all the things that they're to do, he says, and you shall know that I am Yahweh in the midst of Israel. And then comes, and I will pour out my spirit upon so forth. So it's all conditional on them doing something, and, this, and then he'll do his bit. And this condition is given to Israel your sons and your daughters Christians and others who do not keep those commands cannot read themselves into it clearly God was speaking to Israel of whom Judah and Joel were so your sons relate to them not every human all flesh does not mean anything with flesh as animals when Peter, when Peter mentioned this in Acts chapter 2 he was speaking to those Jews coming to keeping the feast of Pentecost Many Christians wrongly use this to claim things, i.e. tongues, speaking in tongues, that was not for them and not for every future period after Acts 2. I remind you in Acts 2 or nowhere else was a human interpreter or translator used in the speaking of tongues between Peter and the hearers. To also see to whom God was speaking, see Isaiah chapters 44 now to also understand this prophecy of Joel that ended up in Acts chapter 2 um, see also Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 Ezekiel chapter 39 verse 29 and Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 I was going to say to understand who got the gift of speaking in tongues as mentioned in book of Acts um, chapter 2 in fulfillment of the prophecies to Israel See a study titled Acts 1 and 2, Holy Spirit and Tongues on www.forwardtoyahweh.com. It will show you that not everyone got the gift of speaking in tongues. In fact, only a limited number of people. There were speakers and there were hearers. And everyone else but the speakers were hearers. My point being, this um, spirit falling day of Pentecost is only to Israel and was for a, prof a prophesied purpose. I'm um, spreading this message, not for Pentecostal or other religions to, to claim it a hundred or hundred and twenty so years ago as a gift for today. Last couple, of, last chapter, chapter three. Read a couple of verses. Verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. Verse 17, so shall you know, this is, I think God talking to the other nations now, so shall you know that I am Yahweh, your, your God dwelling in Zion. My mistake, he's still talking to Israel. My holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. It shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop 
down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of Yahweh, and shall water the valley of Shittim. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for Yahweh dwelleth in Zion. Shalom until tomorrow. Happy studies.